been hectic time for everyone in New Zealand, being able to come out of lockdown and now we're able to use our boats and go out on much needed adventures. Also this time of year is sort of coming just into summer, we're also going to get in a lot of cases bad algae bloom. As the water starts to heat up and you get a bit more sunlight on the water from the longer summer days. This in turn creates quite dirty water which can be quite unpredictable. Sometimes it can be perfect conditions above the water but as soon as you get below it turns to custard. So in this video, we've been on a couple of dives of late that have been reasonably hard work, sort of scratching around to try and get a feed, dealing with the dirty water that we've been encountering. And I'll talk through some techniques that I like to use if you're restricted to a small area with dirty water. We we're pretty excited. This was our first trip out on the boat out offshore after lockdown. Conditions weren't amazing. And you can see on the way out, it was a complete whiteout. It was worth the trip though, once we got out there it was beautiful scenery with lots of waterfalls pouring down off the cliffs as there had been lots and lots of rain. Although beautiful, not a great thing for the visibility. As we talked about with the algae bloom, we we're also dealing with runoff here too. The swell was up so we we're kind of restricted where we could dive. I was diving with my dive buddy Sophie and we were restricted to a small bit of coast. So we thought we'd quickly scoot through it see if we can snoop a snapper right up in the shallows and if not we'll create a couple of ground baits with kinners or sea urchins to see if we can attract some snapper into shoot to get some for a feed. The surge was quite bad when we got right up in the shallows and visibility got worse if you went out over the cow. So I quickly deployed a quick ground bait. I left the ground bait for maybe about 10 minutes. You don't want to leave it too long as often the case, if there's lots of fish there, they'll eat all the kinner and bugger off because they'll be full. I made this ground bait in quite a difficult spot to approach, but due to the dirty water, I didn't need really high ground to set it up on. If the water was clear, this would normally be a terrible spot to do a ground bait, as it's right up and shallow and not a big rock. There's plenty of snapper on it and there's some nice good eating size ones. Don't muck around and take a quick shot. In this case, as soon as I shoot the fish and I'm happy that the shot is secured, I want to try and pull that fish back over the rock. I don't want to make a heap of commotion and try and spook everything else there. Because a lot of the time if you make your approach correct in this dirty water, sometimes the other snapper won't see where the spear came from. Obviously coming into summer, your weedy float boat's going to be so important, especially in the upper North Island. Get your fish in it straight away so you don't have to worry about sharks. Then we went off to Sophie's ground bait. So we made a ground bait each that we could sort of go backwards and forwards that we weren't very far apart, maybe 100 metres apart. Again, this ground bait was loaded with snapper. It's quite hard to see in this dirty water. But Sophie zeroes in on the biggest one and pulls off a perfect kill shot. Pull it back over, Soph. Soph, come back. Although you might be reasonably exhausted from sneaking over the rock, just think. Pull the fish straight back over the rock as quickly as you can. Even fish that are well legal, I like to measure them because it gives you a good indication on how big the fish are that you're shooting. And it might save you from telling too many fibs to your mates of the big one that got away. Again, the same approach. I'm sneaking between these two bits of rock, coming up to my ground bait that I set maybe half an hour earlier. Again it's loaded with snapper and they don't seem too bothered by me. 
So I get a decent shot off, it's well secured, and straight back over the rock, and I'm just gonna muscle the snapper back over the rock. Get out of sight from the ground bait, so that I have a good indication that maybe the snapper didn't see where I was. Again, straight into my float boat. Keep that fish smell out of the water. Load it up, ready to go again, and we're off to Sophie's ground bait. We've left it again for maybe 10, min 10 minutes, not too long, because the snapper will eat all those kinners. Not as many fish on this ground bait this time, so obviously a lot of them got spooked off. But there's still a decent one there, and Sophie tries to put another kill shot, but it's a little high and clips the top of its head, and it races off. Round three on my ground bait. I'll just check it one more time before going back to the boat to pick up our other dive buddy. Now this time, as I come over, I make it a bit of a rookie mistake. I didn't check what the swell was doing. And you'll see the swell become stronger and stronger. I don't want to come over the rock right in the shallows here when that surge is really strong. Otherwise, I'm going to get rolled over the rock and expose myself and make for a difficult shot. So I'm just going to hold myself here before coming over the rock to wait out the surge. The surges will come in sets. So there might be one, two, three, four, five waves. So I know that in between those surges, that's when I want to sneak over the rock. So it's easy for me to approach. As I feel the swell and the surge sort of ease a bit, I come over and spot one more snapper. very successful on just that one small ground bait in a sort of a crappy spot. I got three good eating size snapper off and I'm pretty happy with that. Water's quite dirty and there's lots of swell coming from the north, the northeast. We found a little bit of coastline that had a bit of shelter. The water was quite dirty. Me and Sophie made uh, a couple of ground baits. We just were sea urchins or kinners, and then we just went in between them, diving over, checking over to try and get some snapper. And fortunate, the one fortunate thing with dirty water is sometimes the snapper won't spook off after you shoot one because they can't see where the spear came from. So we managed to get two or three off each ground bait, so it worked really well. As mentioned, I'm going to tie in two dives because they were very, very similar with virtually the same conditions. Dive two, again, we were met with a fairly big swell, so I knew it was going to be really surgy right up in the shallows, and the visibility was pretty poor again. We were pretty restricted right up in the shallows because as we went out deeper onto the kelp, you start losing the light reflection, as well as getting a lot more sediment sitting above it. Sophie was on the money straight away and was picking up heaps of snapper just scooting through the shallows. A really good start. Again, she got another snapper and I hadn't even seen one yet. But I soon got my marching orders and told to get out of her territory. So I thought well, I'll make a quick ground bait behind her and see if I can find a snapper in the area. The kin is in fantastic condition this time of year as they're spawning. So 
add a quick feed of them before making up a ground bait out of them. A multi-purpose effective tool that I have is my Weddy Drop Weight. It's a great shape and perfect for breaking open kinna, as well as obviously anchoring my float boat and being able to slip into my weight belt and use as an extra weight. Break up on a few of these kinna on the white rock here, because in that dirty water, you're going to get more reflection and be able to see easier. And as we discussed in dive one, I'm trying to be a bit smarter this time in the shallows and I've checked the swell. So waiting for those, that swell and that lift to die off before sneaking over my ground bait. It's going to make the approach so much easier. Keep the profile really, really low and sneak over really slowly. Quick movements will spook a fish. I can see there's plenty of snapper over it. I'm just going to wait for a good opportune moment to get a good shot. A good kill shot. As we discussed on the other ground baits, I'm just waiting here and pulling the fish back over. Hopefully his mates didn't see where I came from. And I'm able to pull old mate over here without making too much commotion. So if you got another snapper, so we already had four snapper. So we kept heading along the coast as I might as well check a little bit more off and see if I can snoop a snapper sitting up in shallow here somewhere. You get that snapper in the float boat before mucking around and sorting out my setup. As again, the more time you have dead fish in the water, the more likely you're going to attract a seal or a shark or a stingray. Load it up and I can pick up my drop weight as I anchor my float boat or my float nearby to my ground bait so I'm able to orientate myself back to it. Snapper do a really great job at camouflaging themselves around kelp. So you really want to take your time when it's dirty and sneaking over rocks. Even when it's surgy like this, snapper and other fish are really, really good at finding small little eddies that they can hide from the surge and the swell. As I was coming up, I spotted the snapper parked up on this gutter. I think fortunate this time of year, your snapper are a little slower as they're coming into spawning and this one didn't spook. This dive was only destined to be a short time in the water in the morning and we were pretty happy we had a few snapper, which was more than enough for us for the week. Before heading home, we thought we'd grab a few scallops just to mix in the bag with the crayfish and the snapper we had from that day. Again, we had to sort of work in between the big dredge marks to try and find some open ground where the scallops hadn't been scooped up. When scallop diving, it pays to try and be safe, especially if you're free diving. So you see the system that me and Dan are using here. We get to the surface and we'll take turns holding the catch bag. So we're able to do one up, one down, and keep an eye on each other. And I'm checking the size of my scallops with my scallop measure on my weedy scallop bag, making sure that each one is big enough. And by the time I'm finished that, Dan's gonna be back up with a whole heap, and then we can swap over again. 
Dan got a good amount in that dive. So I'm having a quick look at the boat to just register where I am. Often I use the anchored boat as a reference point when getting scallops so you know where you've dived and where you want to dive on your next dive. I wanted to stay close to when Dan got all of those scallops to see if I can get heaps too. We were lucky and struck a really, really nice spot here. This nice white sand makes it really nice and easy to see the scallops as well. We only had to have a few dives and then we had a good amount. Even though legally we were allowed 60 scallops, 20 for our boatmen, 20 for us, two of our, us divers, that doesn't necessarily mean we have to take that. I don't know about you, but I certainly can't eat a whole heap of scallops at once, so I'd much rather leave them on the bottom of the ocean here and then pick them up next time and keep them nice and fresh. Until next time, enjoy the summer of spearfishing.